So, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to the weekly SGC's Facebook Live. Uh, today, we are very honored to have with us Venerable Kamarama as our guest speaker for today's talk. So before we continue, let me give a brief introduction to Venerable Kamarama. Venerable K. Kamarama was ordained in Sri Lanka in the year 1967. He first studied it under his teacher, Venerable G. Nasisara Mahathero and Gangaramaya Institute, Colombo. He later graduated from Buddhist studies at Parandaniya University, Kandi in 1981. Soon after, he was sent by his teacher to the USA, where he learned from various teachers, learning how to serve others and to contribute to the world. So Venerable has conducted Buddhist classes in America, New Zealand, and Malaysia in the past. His teachings focus largely on the application of Buddhism here and now to better our lives for the future. So may we now invite Venerable Kamarama to lead us to pay respects to the Buddha? Now let us pay respects to Venerable with three prostrations as well. First prostration. Second prostration. And third prostration. So may we now invite Venerable Kamarama to lead us for the opening puja. So I'll be sharing the puja. Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Das Namo Das Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sang Buddhas. We take three refuges by together. <clears throat> Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sangam saranam gachami Duti ampi buddham saranam gachami Duti ampi dhammam saranam gachami Duti ampi sangam saranam gachami Tati yang pi bundang saranang gachami Tati yang pi dhammang saranang gachami Tati yang pi sanggang saranang gachami Sadu, sadu, sadu okay. So So uh, before we continue, let me just give a brief introduction to what we'll be covering today. So uh, the topic for today is applying Buddhist teachings in our everyday lives. So please feel free to share with us if you have any questions uh, through the Facebook live chat. We'll be collating them to us uh, Venerable later on. So now I'll be handing the time over to Venerable Kamarama. So please. Uh, good afternoon and beautiful day to all of you. And first of, first of all, I would like to thank to Spiritual Group Cultivation for selecting me for this event. At the same time, I also want to mention that uh, my president of the Opeka Buddhist Society, 
and the committee members for giving me the blessing to go ahead with Dhamma session. I'm so proud that I'm able to, I'm going to share with you knowledge or at, at the same time, my topic that how to apply the Buddha's teaching or teaching of any uh, teachers into our day-to-day -day life. Uh, about nearly 3,000 ago in India, the Buddha, the Gautama the Buddha expounded this beautiful teaching. Beautiful at the beginning, beautiful in the middle, and beautiful at the end. So therefore, applying this beautiful teaching, the meaningful teaching into our life, we make our life also beautiful and meaningful. So basically, what Buddha taught, sabba papasa akarana, not to do evil or unwholesome thing in our life. Kusalasa upasampada, to do good or wholesome activities in our, in our life. Sachitta pariyodapana, purify the mind. This will be the teaching of all the Buddhas. So therefore, basically, these are the facts and these are the things that we have to study and put into our day-to-day -day life. So then, what is, uh, what are the evil? What is not good for either one? That is called unwholesome activities. So what about the wholesome activities? They are to, that to, which that lead our life into our salvation. Okay, and especially Buddha gave us the path, the magga we call it, dana, sila, bhavana. These are the three main pillars of the Buddha's teaching. So dana, the, there are ten perfection to be achieved, to be fulfilled by a bodhisattva in order to be a Buddha. So dana, how do we understand the dana? Dana means there are many ways. We call it giving. Basically, we understand giving is dana. But to me, in my understanding, it is more than that. Again, I'm here to say that this is how I understood the Buddha's teaching. Either, whether it's right or wrong, it is it's there. I mean, the, the, the devotees or the, the, the members, then they can judge. This is, this is the way I, how I understood. It doesn't mean that I am the correct or I am not the correct one. So this is the way how I understood the Buddha's teaching. So therefore, dana. Basically, every, a lot of people understand dana means uh, giving something, especially to the, any uh, clergy or any religious leaders with food and uh, requisites. But to me, the way I understood dana is giving or sacrifice someone's life for the benefit of others. So how do we do that? Sometimes people think that it's not that easy, this dana. The, the way they understood, the way they uh, follow, maybe they find it's difficult because the way they understood, I think it may be correct. In my understanding, dana means sacrifice. If I can sacrifice my life for the good and the benefit of another one, to me, that's called dana. Buddha means dana is actually sacrifice. So when you give, your, you can give your time, you can give some other items, you can give your thought to someone's benefit. So therefore, dana means sacrifice to other people's benefit. And the seal, dana seal, second stage. Seal means what? 
moral conduct. How do we do that? As Buddhist, in the Buddhist teaching, there are precepts. So when we come to it, the precept, I think you all know that Payu precept, eight precept, ten precept. Can I say these are all like a fencing to protect ourselves? I give you an example. Sometime in our compound, we plant vegetable and things. Let's say if there are no intruders, if there are no someone come and steal, do we need a fencing or not? I know in Europe, especially in New Zealand, when they grow vegetable or plants in their compound, usually they don't make fencing. Why? There are no intruders. So what I'm going to say is the precept is just like a fencing to protect ourselves. So if basically if we don't steal, don't kill, don't lie, do we need precept to have it? Not an issue. But the most important thing is actually to prevent, not to do all those things. If I don't steal, if I don't lie, do I have to observe the precept? Observing is another thing. Not wrong. When I say not wrong, it doesn't mean right. When I say not right, it doesn't mean wrong. So that observing, the purpose of observing or taking precept is to protect ourselves from all unwholesome activities. Morning, we take precept. Daytime, we get involved in all those things, our daily life. At the evening, again, before we go to sleep, we observe again. My point is actually the way I understood observing, taking precept itself not enough to lead a moral life. The moral life means knowing everything. Okay, there are three kinds of knowledge that we have. Sometimes we hear from Sufu, we, we hear from the, our teachers, or we hear from our parents. We call it a Suttamaya knowledge, the knowledge that we, that we accumulate by hearing. What are the other two knowledge? Chintamaya knowledge, meaning we read books. So therefore, we accumulate the knowledge by reading as well. Then what is the third knowledge? Bhavanamaya knowledge, experiential knowledge. What is the most important knowledge here, actually? Bhavana knowledge. Why I say so? This is the way I have I understood. Suttamaya knowledge, Chintamaya knowledge, Bhavana knowledge. What Buddha had during his struggle for enlightenment, it is Bhavana knowledge, which means experiential knowledge. By hearing, by reading, we don't get the perfect knowledge. So following all these three steps, and we come to the Bhavanamaya knowledge. So once we get into the Bhavanamaya knowledge, then we will come to understand that what is right and what is not right. By knowing, by understanding, by realizing what is right, what is the right way. Then we establish that knowledge into our mind and the heart. So then it is already there. Once we establish that decision, going through all this knowledge, then it becomes part of our life. So my point is again, then whether we observe or not, whether we take precept or not, we don't get doing all those unwholesome things because it's already there. By reciting, by observing what we do, just follow the tradition, rituals, right and ritual. It's not harmful, it's not wrong, but what my point is, it's not enough. So in order to practice or to be a useful person into oneself as well as to the society, to the family, to your, your village at large, to the whole world, to be a good person, 
the buddhist teaching is if we really follow through our experiential knowledge we call it bhavana me knowledge then we will not go wrong we don't have to hurry we don't have to rush for oh i forgot to observe i forgot to observe the seed of so and so because it's already in there it's already planted so then with this knowledge then how are we going to verify and uh, to know or get to know what is the what is good and what is no good the buddhism is unlike other things in the world we cannot make a instrumental approach when the scientists do experiment they make a instrumental approach with the instrument they test they examine and they come up with the result but the religion you cannot use instrumental approach then what then how religion we have to make devotional approach or intellectual approach there are two ways otherwise there is no way that we can approach for a religion okay what is a devotional approach then what is intellectual approach in the world there are many followers they have this what you call devotional approach why it is easy is comfortable you feel happy then what is the intellectual approach using our experiential knowledge as i explained before the three kind of knowledge suttamaya chintamaya actually the panyamaya the other one the bhavanamaya experiential knowledge when we experience everything then we confirm and we establish it within ourselves So this is the truth this is the way that i can lead my life okay there are some example because i'm talking about how i understood the buddha's teaching so this is the way i understood okay so when we talk about dana again many people say many devotees told me sufu not that easy it need a lot of money i say why Did the Buddha use a lot of money to practice the dana during his uh, training period? No, it is not the matter of what you have money or not money. It is your thought. It is your understanding. Beginning, I already said that sacrifice is the dana. When I spoke to some of the devotees here, they are the one who said that bante is not easy. We need to have a lot of money. contribute and give dana i say no i don't agree with your concept why bante as a as a supu how can you say that i say no it's a sacrifice i can sacrifice my time i can sacrifice my my labor i can sacrifice my energy for the good of others that is called dana sacrifice there are many people in the world i do not mention the names but they have understood the real meaning of the buddha's word that's why some of the teachers in the past said that giving is better than to receive what does it mean how can giving is can be better than to receive we like to receive many people like to receive less people like to give but giver is the most happier person in the world than the receiver why again for the normal mind for the normal understanding it may not be correct no so we like to receive who like to give but giver is the the most happiest man okay i give you the reason the way i understood the giver simply give dana within his own mean within his own capability with most happiness but the receiver sometimes may not be the happiest as the giver why again the way i understood oh he got so much money he will get a little bit thing how can so unhappy therefore is a theory is already established that giver is the most happiest than the receiver compared to in many cases as i said giver is always happy i give 
to whoever it is, the what I can give. Sometimes, okay, very simple ex uh, example that I uh, myself appear in the world. When we go in out, you will you will meet many people. For example, if you are in the bus, you see someone coming to the bus that who really need the seat more than you do or more than I do. So is, is it wrong to give them the seat? For myself, sometimes I do that. Why? I'm happy. Do I need money? No. So therefore, giving is not really about the money, not about the property. Giving is your thought post, thoughtfulness whenever it's necessary, whenever you can do that. I do that. That's why I said that is the way I understood the Buddha teaching, giving, the dan. Anybody can, anyone can practice within their own capability. When you walk on the road, if there is a cyclist, cyclist coming on your way, you can, because the cyclist starts shivering that, am I going to langa him? Am I going to, uh, I mean, push him out? So that he is thinking all kinds of uh, things. So therefore, we can go one side, let him go nicely. Then he is very happy. He stopped a lot of struggle in his mind. How I'm going to go through this? Because the, the road is narrow. Then understanding that, for myself, I do give away. I do give them the part. Then they're happy. Thank you, Sufu. Bye. Their happiness. So therefore, again, the giving is not that, that difficult if you understood what really giving is. Sealer, morality, same thing. Because if you do not involve in unnecessary uh, things, then do you need observe day and night? It's not wrong. But if you don't get involved yourself, is it not the most necessity, most important thing in our life? We can do that as a rite and rituals. So therefore, time after almost about nearly 2,600 after the Buddha's enlightenment, people began to understand the teaching of the Buddha in different way, according to their own comfort, interpret according to their understanding. So I am here doing it according to my understanding. Dana, Sila, Bhavana. And devotional approach is very compatible for everybody. So what we do, it's just like a robot. Serpu or the teacher or whoever program us. They use the all kind of uh, language, mechanical language, so that they say, okay, at the very beginning, I give you an example, when the child is born, the good parents, devotional parents say, please, uh, pai pai, uh, pai pai, uh, pai pai. Uh. So they are registering the program in the child's mind. So they start, he start growing up. So, so that what he thinks actually is a devotional approach. But not knowing that forever, what he does, it's the same thing. What is, I mean, sometimes we can go on the wrong or not useful thing. I give you an example. Okay. I have seen in such about few years ago, we don't see it here that much. I think you all have seen that uh, when people perform the funeral rites. This is because I want to give you an example. What happened when you go on the blind road? in the faithful, in the devotional role. So I remember that uh, they decorate the place very much. There's uh, two guardians. So okay, there was a story at the very beginning, I don't know when that had happened in China, I think long before. It's also a story that um, when, the, when the son want to do the Funeral right for the father, he prepared all kinds of vegetables, offering and a lot of things as they believe and as they are taught. But at the end, 
then when they are just above to pray, the dog, their house dog, to start eating the, all the food. So therefore, they thought, no, no, they must be, the dog must be tied up. So he got the dog and tied up. His son saw that when he come to his father's funeral, everything prepared. Oh, I forgot to tie the dog. It become a part of the ritual because it's a ignorance. And after many years later, so now sometimes I still see the paper dough. Because it is what they have established in their mind. This thing must be there in order to make it perfect. That's called because it's a it's a blind faith, no intellectual approach onto it. So therefore, my advice and my uh, way of believing or accepting the the Buddha is not to go go by intellectual approach. Then we reach the destination. We verify it with using the experiential knowledge. And thereafter, once we confirm, we establish it within ourselves. Then thereafter, we don't have to so worry so much about whether I observe the precept or not, whether I broke the precept or not. And then sometimes when we talk about the precept, people again go into, not to say wrong understanding, but going into not right understanding. Okay, for example, uh, sometimes they ask me, Sapu, it's wrong to gambling, right? Then sometimes I ask them, what is gambling actually? Oh, they, then they have some particular things that they talk about. I say, why do you do that then? Then I say, no, because you want to make, make money. Okay. You do that, that one to make more money, right? If making money is wrong, why do you work? You are working also for the money. Then if you think that uh, gambling can make more money, I'm not encouraging you. But I can't see that as the way people believe wrong or right. I can't apply that. In this aspect, the whole life is gambling. Right? We work for money. That means it's gambling. So it, got, it, it goes for the rest also. Remember, in the first sermon of the Buddha to five ascetic monks, what the Buddha said, Dwemi bhikkave anta pabba jitena nasevi tabba. That five ascetic, this is 2,500 years ago, they were almost enlightened. They were searching for what is truth. When the Buddha spoke to them, Dwemi bhikkave anta pabba jitena nasevi tabba. Monks, I'm telling you, I'm asking you, as monks, you don't go to the extreme. They are never said don't do or do. Buddha never said don't do or no. Don't do or do. He never said that. Then, if you to become a monk, then you have a purpose. Why? Look for the search for the truth. In that respect, if you become a monk, then there is a, a purpose. For that purpose, then avoid this too extreme. Again, he never said, don't do. No. Avoid the extreme. Stay on the middle path. The middle path doesn't mean that Samma Ditti, Samma Sankapa, Samma Vacha, Samma Kammacha, eightfold path. It is, it is part of the middle path. Middle path means uh, not to go, means, uh, middle path means not to go to any extreme. It doesn't say don't gamble. It doesn't say don't drink. It doesn't say, doesn't say not to do, but do not go to the extreme. But once you are in the extreme, that is where you suffer. So therefore, Buddhist teaching is actually basically not to do evil, to do good, and purify the mind, and not to go to any extreme. But then, if you were to go by yourself, 
what the Buddha say, the consequences of your action will follow you, not me. Whether to do or not to do, you determine yourself. I only explain what is right, what is not right. What is wrong, what is not wrong. According to what? According to the journey to Nibbana. If you are on this path, if you want, then you have to be this way. If you do not want, it's your thing that you may have to take the, your own consequences. So therefore, extremism is not in Buddha's teaching. Do what you want to do, but make sure you are not in the extreme. Remember, when the Siddhartha Gautam, six years, it is said that he went for self-mortification. And he was just out from the palace, one extreme, luxury life. So that therefore following the other ascetic in the Himalayan, he went for another extreme, that is self-mortification. Not, not eating anything, not giving any comfort to the life until he become bone and the skeleton and the skin. Then in the one of the story, it is said that while he is doing his meditation, he heard the voice. Someone saying that don't pull too strong. Maybe it break. That means don't pull it too strong. The rock will break. Don't loosen too much. It will go haywire. I mean, this is a story. True or not true, I don't know, but there is a, some uh, moral values there. The value is that it means not to, not not to go, not go to any extreme, but stay on the middle path. When you are in the middle path, it will drive you in the safe way towards the final goal we call it Nirvana. And sometimes, and also many devotees, because especially those who are going through devotional approach, they say, I am, I'm too, still I'm young. I have a lot of things to do, enjoy my life. Why not I go to the temple or to become an ascetic when I get older? I don't need to learn what is it reason now. Maybe later part of my life. Again, it is a misunderstanding of meditation. Meditation is not aiming for any particular uh, concept. Meditation teaches us to improve our mind, purify our mind. So, like, uh, if you learn any program, how to program or IC or PLC, that means you do the program or robot, you program, you learn how to program, but it's up to you what purpose you are making it. Some people, they do program, they make beautiful uh, a consumer product in the world. Some people learn the program, they do missiles and the time bombs. Same people, same program, but depend how you use it. If you have a proper knowledge, what is right and what is not right, then learning something is not wrong. How you use it, it can be wrong or right. So learning a program doesn't mean you are wrong. Depend how you use it for what purpose. If you are using it for destructive purpose, then it can say it's wrong, abuse, misuse. If you are using it for some consumer product or people to make the people life more comfortable and easy, then it's for a good purpose. I'm sure you all are also very good in IT. And then remember, it depends on how we use it. Use for good purpose is good, and use it bad purpose then it's bad. And again, that we are taught metta bhavana. So what we do? Many people, many devotees, we get together and then we recite loving kindness. But 
without understanding what it says. Karniya metta, I hear, I, I'm sure that you heard about it. I'm sure you are reciting it sometime. But we use use it for love meditation on meditation on metta bhavana. What we do? We decide. Not wrong. But not wrong doesn't mean not correct as well. Because the metta sutta giving us the instruction of how to practice metta bhavana. But many of us, what we do, instead of following the instruction, we decide. Everybody together decides metta bhavana, karni metta kusurani, antan santan padang abhisamecha. Then, and finish it. But actually, if you really study about it, it is the instruction of how to practice loving kindness. Even like Mangala Sutta, Sutra of Blessing, we decide for the blessing. Again, what it has, full of instruction set. How do we get the blessing? So, my point is here, when we do things, we must use it, we must do it with experiential knowledge, intellectual approach to the point. Then only it brings us to the right decision. Sometimes we want to go somewhere. We just go to the bus stop. Whatever bus comes, we jump into the bus. Not knowing where, where it's going. It's the same life. Like we are following this, we are following that. Sometimes today, this circle say one thing, that circle say another thing. So we are very confused. We don't know what is right and what is wrong. There are many devotees. Sometimes they go to this temple or that temple. After some time, follow another one. Why? They don't have a proper knowledge about what they are doing. Why again? Because of that. Their approach is a devotional approach. Do what they say. So therefore, please remember, in order to uh, practice the three, three things, sila, samadhi, bhavana, or dana, sila, bhavana, you must have uh, experience and knowledge and intellectual approach. Then you get the right thing on the right place and you drive your life on the right path. Not to go to any extreme, this is Buddha's word. Don't go to the extreme. Did he ever say that? Don't do that. Um, no, I can't really accept that kind of theory. Buddha is only, he enlightens and also discovered, expounded this truth and explained to the people. Other than that, those who follow doesn't mean his friend. Those who give up doesn't mean his enemy. I got nothing to do. I only explain. I uh, expounded this. I rejoice with you all. And to do or not to do is your all decision. If you do, this is what happens. If you don't do, this is what happens. Well, then again, how do you can receive the experience or knowledge? It, do it doesn't mean you, you study Abhidhamma, you study higher Dhamma. You can be a perfect uh, followers. No. You can start from the very beginning. And how do we confirm and reconfirm of what other people say? By experiencing it. I give you an example. Someone want to go to, say, Amokyo. Someone give them the path how to go. Not enough. Some landmark. So, if I am given the landmark, so what I do, I am very aware about the road as I was told by someone, go to Aljuni, turn right, okay, turn right. And there you will see a supermarket. Oh, the, I, as I reach there, I see a supermarket. Then I reconfirm, yeah, what he said is true. Then he, he tells me until the end of the journey. So further you go, you, you get to know this MRT station. Then I go there. I say, yeah, correct. Then I have my confidence on what he said. So step by step, I will confirm and reconfirm the path he shown to me is correct. Then there's no fear. I go. 
Uh, that is how we confirm and that is how we apply our instrumental approach. There is an old saying, uh, when there is a peace, prepare for the war. When the precaution is taken, there is no fear. So it is not a matter that doing good bring us to the heaven or hell. Heaven or uh, what do you call uh, the Western world. Once we do good means we are safe. We are sure that we don't go back. As again, the, the Chinese uh, proverb. During the peaceful time, prepare for the war. When the precaution is taken, there is no fear. So that as we learn and practice what is good and not to practice what is no good, whether it brings us to the heaven or to Sita or whatever it is, there is no fear. But what about that? If we get involved ourselves in unwholesome act, we can say, uh, who knows that the hell and the heaven, all these things are in this world. Maybe. Who knows at the end, we really see the hell after doing all the bad deeds. Then too late. But according to that Chinese saying, peaceful time, we prepare for the war. But we don't go to the war. We prepare for it. I we prepare ourselves for the anything. When there is a precaution is take, taken, then there is no fear. As we practice the Buddha's te teaching, knowing and understanding and by the experiential knowledge, and then we establish into ourselves, then wherever we go, whatever we do, we are being protected. Why? The thing is here, not in the uh, IC memory. Once it's the IC memory, we had to recall it. But it, when it's in the main memory, it's automatic. That's why when you see someone in suffering, the compassion is already there. We don't need to uh, see, oh, this person, uh, the boy or the girl or the, or the Christian or the Buddhist or Hindu or what. No, it doesn't come to you at all. If the compassion is growing in your heart, you immediately attend to it. You quickly, I have done many. It's not for any so, because when someone in trouble, I don't need to know who is this, who is that. In the, in the law, if I am protected, I will go and help within my own means. I think a lot of, uh, I have seen in this country, there are many have that kind of good nature. They don't observe precept, but they are taught by somehow they are taught in the school, maybe in, in the house. So therefore, again, round up my story, round up my uh, sharing session, I highlight again what is uh, how to apply the teaching of the Buddha. It is how we apply onto our life to make our life beautiful and useful to the world. I make myself more useful to myself, of course, and to my neighbor, to my friends, to my family, to the, my village, to the, my country, the country, to the whole world. If you are a good person, everybody will respect. Why the Buddha and there are many other religious leaders in the world are being respected? Renounce means uh, they have given up everything and cultivate the spiritual as your uh, uh, spiritual group, cultivation group. They have cultivated good moral, good nature in the life. So they have become very useful people to the world. Don't you think that is what, what that we also have, have, have to be? Not to be a nuisance, to be a useful person. If you can learn this using the teaching of Buddha or teaching of the others, we make our life more useful, more blissful, more happy, and become a good example to the others. We branded ourselves so and so, but the brand name doesn't make any sense sometimes. It's only for recognizing purposes. But the Buddha said, 
the, your, your action make you good or bad. Not your name, not your the, the, the race, not your religion. Kamma, I mean Kamma is that what we what we do. Good one give good result. Bad thing give bad result. The important thing is to understand this one clearly using your experiential knowledge and intellectual approach will bring you to there. And once you come to the, uh, the your your uh, I mean decision, you establish it yourself. Once you establish it between yourself, it will it will be there forever. So remember. What we reap is what we actually sow. And regarding the karma theory, that's one of the main theories that Buddha talked about. Even before the Buddha was born in the Hindu tradition, they had this theory, karma. What you do, it come back to you. So therefore, please remember and how to apply the Buddhist teaching into our life. I can make it even larger. Whatever the knowledge that we gain through Sutamaya, Chintamaya, and exp Bhavanamaya. The most important knowledge here is Bhavanamaya knowledge, experiential knowledge. No matter, then you will not go wrong. You will never be wrong. Why? It's, you experience it. Then nobody can say, no, no, that's not wrong. Because you experience it. If I say, give you this kind of apple here, you eat it, then I cannot say apple is sour. Because you know they're not so good. Apple is not sour, apple is sweet. Why? If you never eat before, you might believe me. Why? Surfu said. For surfu said means everything correct. I'm not saying not correct or correct. But important thing is to establish yourself by your own knowledge. You try to gain experiential knowledge. Not the Sutamaya, not the Panyama. Use the intellectual approach to so then i think your life the whole life can be a very blissful beautiful life before to end up this one i will give another nice story it's not for the buddha or whoever is from from the culture there are four people went on a trip in the sea by the ship so Three of them are very professional. Some of them are scientists. Some, them, some, one of them is an astrologist. Another one is another. So the other person is just an ordinary person. So when you are in the in the ship together for some time, you get to know one another. So they start talking. What are you? How are you? What are you doing? What is your profession? Oh no, I'm an astrologist. Oh, means no, I can read all those things. The, without that knowledge, the ship doesn't, cannot go. Hmm. So then three of them are very professional. They, they, they talk and they boss themselves. Up and the, the poor man, uh, yeah, you wasted your life. Not learning all these things. So eventually, the ship start sinking. Everybody, everybody got panic. Then the poor man, the kampung man, the village man, uneducated man, ask question. Because the other three told him, one by one, you wasted your one third of life. Another one said, two third of life you wasted. If you do not know uh, astrology, I think you wasted the three quarter of your, your life. Then suddenly, ship starts sinking. Everybody panic. Don't know how to save their life. Then that poor man, kampung man asked, do you know swimmiology? What is that? How to swim? No, we never learn. Your whole life is wasted. Because you are going to sin and die. This is some kind of life, but there are some moral values on that, that. Meaning, boasting ourselves, we know that, I know that, doesn't mean that we are a perfect man. So, to learn from, doesn't matter who teaches us. If it's a good thing, we learn it. How we learn? Not because of what he said, not because of his surfu, or he's a teacher, or he's a lecturer, no. What he says, we 
experiencing by our own if we want to establish ourselves what is right and what is wrong so i hope that uh, i am i was with you and sharing my knowledge again what I'm, i have to say that this is my own knowledge which i derive from the teaching of the buddha and teaching of other teachers in the world what is good i take and i uh, use my own experiential knowledge to judge it and once i make a judgment with intellectual approach i establish it then i work it out as long as it's not wrong i will do it therefore dana you don't think that you need a money or you need a big property anywhere on the road anywhere you can we can do dana seela means that we protect ourselves of not getting involved in unwholesome activities so we know what is wrong what is not wrong what is wholesome and what is not unwholesome what is wholesome and what is not unwholesome to avoiding all those we make our path purification purify the mind so once we are on avoiding all these two third one is purify our own mind then we purify our own mind then nibbana or salvation is achieved and thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity uh, sharing my knowledge with all of you now i may listen any kind of question that you may have regarding this what i speak or regarding not to say uh, not to ask me about how to win four digit or what not not that <laughs> not to ask the numbers or what no 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 i mean regarding our life and regarding our buddha's teaching and the teaching of the good thing so i may be uh, spend my time for answer that question and thank you very much thank you thank you bhante Thank you so much for your sharing. Yes, uh, we will now proceed with the Q and A session. So, if you have any questions for Bante, uh, please feel free to type inside the Facebook live chat. I'll be reading off from there. But before that, uh, actually, I have a question for Bante. So, uh, just now, Bante actually spoke on, uh, the middle way, which to some extent refers to, uh, when we do things, we want to do them in moderation. Uh, from how I understand it, is that uh. We do something, but ultimately the goal is we can endure it. Uh, like we try to do whatever we can, and we endure as much as we can, so long as we can maintain some level of mental clarity or establish some form of mindfulness. So, uh, how then can we be sure if uh, whether this actually comes from a place of uh, ego or pride, uh, or when we actually are able to, uh, yeah. So whether it comes from a place of pride. Again, sorry, I didn't. Okay, so uh, maybe I'll just repeat my question again. So, uh, just now, Bante, you spoke on the middle way. Uh, when we do things, we try to do it uh, in moderation. For example, we talk about gambling. Then, in this case, we will try to make sure that we are able to establish mindfulness. And as long as we are able to maintain our mindfulness, we are okay to engage in activity. So, yeah, is that is that correct? Oh, actually, I didn't really get the question. It's about it's fine, it's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, then my it's alright. Uh, maybe I will just read off another question from Facebook Live. So, uh, venerable, can you please explain why there in, uh, Jataka stories, uh, Miss Lee asks Dana says that. Uh, previous life of Buddha donates his wife and children. What, what oh, that very clear. Okay, previous life of the Buddha is uh, uh, the question is not very clear to me. Maybe the person who asked the question can clarify again. But if you talk about the Jataka stories, no. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, of course, there are some moral values on those Jataka stories. Some are believed to be a past life of the Buddha, believed to be. And uh, 
not in my understanding, not really in the Dhamma, but they are bringing us some moral values. But to me, to me, there are more important things in Buddha's teaching than all these data stories and some other accumulated stories behind the Buddhism. Thank you, Bhante. Maybe we will continue another question. So uh, sometimes they say that there's a person who asked previously uh, that uh, sometimes they feel constantly stressed at work, so much so that it affects their sleep or like their daily lives. Yeah, and what then can they do yeah, to manage this stress? Stressfulness, right? Hmm. Due to the workload, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Due to the work, workload, is it? The stress. Yes. So, because the stress, okay, stressfulness actually, of course, due to the workforce. Lah. And then, uh, only thing actually to understand by themselves, and then so there are some teachers sometimes I recommend them the meditation and spend their time on meditation, means like uh, breathing in and out, just to forget about the thing for the moment. But it is not a permanent remedy. It can be if they develop it. But important thing is, sometimes we also go through this kind of uh, situation, stressfulness due to the, our, our work, working time. Then it is for us to understand why. There is no remedy or no teachers can, I think, only can give some uh, uh, advice. But whether that advice is suitable for person is another question. It is to understand by oneself why this. And I mean, they are not renounced people, right? They are, I mean, normal people. So unless they are renounced, then they go through another mission. They go through another cultivation, fully cultivation. Then they can get rid of it. But I don't think they are ready for that. Because Day-to-day -day life is actually is always stressful. Basically, it's because of no winners. And then, uh, it is not to say right or wrong, but it happens sometimes we, what we cannot do. Sometimes you, you are forced to do for the purpose of survival. But balancing it is also in ourselves. Correct? Unless they can do some practice of meditation for a long, long time, then they can get out of this stress. Meaning how it happened because then they all the while they are not thinking about workload. They divert their mind into different sections. Here they can have a devotional approach as well. It is a remedy. So diverting the mind for something good. But when they practice day and day, so it becomes their established practice. Automatically, they will, they will forget about the other part. And at the time pass, also it will uh, save the problem. But if you want to make effort, we can say so. But doing it is not that as easy as when we are saying. Because we are monks, so therefore we don't experience that kind of workload. So, so therefore, the stressfulness does not regularly happen to us. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. Uh, another question. So, during our practice, when we when we practice, actually over time, we actually, uh, especially when we're walking the path as Buddhists, we understand we understand ourselves a little bit better. We know ourselves a little bit better, and then there are some times where we actually realize that there are parts of us that uh, we don't think are very nice or very imperfect, and then we get annoyed with ourselves. Is there a way to deal with this annoyance, 
uh, or this anger towards oneself for not being perfect? But actually, the question is not that clear to me. If you can, I mean, make it very short and then what is... Okay. So, uh, it has got to do with... In, the, in our working life, yes. We, we, no, we, it's we, not we, about it's... working life. Sorry. This, is, has, this has got to do with our own personal practice. Uh, when we are learning as Buddhists, uh, we yeah. discover there are aspects of ourselves that we don't like very much. Uh, we realize that we have a lot of anger within us, for example. And then uh, we get annoyed with uh, ourselves for not being better. So is there a way to deal with this? Uh, actually, yeah, but I mean, this one is based on the, depend on the, the level of our understanding about ourselves and also how much we know about the reality. I think, okay, there is no any... Uh, uh, what do you call it, permanent or theory or that, that can be go with everyone. Everything depending on our own mentality. Not to say we also go through this kind of past sometime. But what we go through may not be uh, easy for the, the rest. Depending on our own personal experience and again, if someone actually have a regular practice of uh, mental cultivation and realization and understanding in the long term, I believe that because this, that is what also I myself have gone through. Everybody have this kind of path. Even the uh, uh, ascetic Gautam, within his uh, six years uh, practice, he also, I believe, went through all those disappointment, discouragement, and this is a part of our life. This may not be the answer for the question, but this question will not remain forever with him one day, whether or not it did also disappear with the time passing. But trying to cure it is, is actually, but trying is always not doing. Trying doesn't mean we are doing, we are trying, but not really doing. But in order to get the correct the the answer it rely on oneself itself. People can advise, we can advise. But the path that we, we are chosen and we are giving them may not be good for their characteristic, may not be acceptable by their mentality. So it's better to understand by themselves why, how this thing happening. Whether or not, it will not remain forever. But before that, if you want to get a good solution, then we have to try. Try mean to understand the right and wrong. Because their background, our background is totally different. In the first place, they have to understand their own background. And um, sometimes, okay, sometimes some people, they, when they want to do uh, spiritual cultivation, anger, hatred, craving arise. To subdue it, that is where we need the determination. To focus your mind onto your own um, object. Once you, when you strongly focus, fo I mean, avoiding all the other thought coming in, then, after some time, you will feel better. But trying is also not doing. Sometimes saying is easy, again, doing is difficult. Everything based on our own temperament, characteristic, and the, the knowledge, and the mentality. Again, uh, again, I think, 90% of the effort to get rid of it in their own. Correct? Thank you so much, Bhante. Actually, Bhante, just now during the talk, you mentioned about sacrifice when you talk about dana. Yeah. So, uh, to some extent, it has got to do with sacrificing our own welfare or happiness for the sake of others. So, uh, but is it okay 
if for 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 us to actually care for ourselves, when we care for ourselves, is it then being selfish? No, because in order to help the others, we have to uh, take care of ourselves first. We must be healthy. We must be good. If I want to pray, if I want to tell other people, I must have the knowledge of it, and not the normal knowledge. I'm talking about experience and knowledge. Not uh, otherwise, it becomes like a Buddha says so and so, Muhammad says so and so, Lord Jesus says so and so, meaning like I am re- relaying the message from someone to another party. Just, a, just like a TV relay station. Not knowing myself what I'm talking about, I tell other people, oh, Buddha said so and so, Buddha. It's not wrong to say Buddha said. But if I really, based on that word, that means I do not know nothing. I'm a relay station. I relay the, 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 the message from the Buddha to another station. That means I don't know anything. No, it's better for, I mean, if we to understand what the Buddha says exactly by experience or knowledge by myself and tell the others why it is wrong, why it is not wrong. Example, the Buddha also said, did the same thing. When he was passing by a village, he saw some children are disturbing a snake. The Buddha stopped. Wait, children, what are you doing? No, we are trying to kill this snake. Why? No, very poisonous. If, he, if the snake bites us, we will die. Did he bite? No. Then Buddha said, Sabbe Tasanti Dandas, so and so, everyone is scared of punishment. And everyone thinks, including myself, including he himself. So if everybody, everybody is scared of punishment, then thinking, Atanang Upamang Katwa, thinking of yourself. I am scared of punishment, so therefore, don't punish others. I am scared of stealing my thing, so therefore, don't steal the other people's thing. Buddha giving example by experience and knowledge. What happened if that thing happened to you? Then you realize. Giving them the experience and knowledge. Not the Sutamaya, not the Chintamaya knowledge. So it's, it's up to us to understand what is Chintamaya, what is Sutamaya, what is... Uh, Bhavana manual, experience and all It's very true that if someone wants to punish me, I scare. By knowing that, please don't harm the others. It is not that um, killing no good, that's not good. No, it is because that harmful act, you are scared mean, they are also scared. Thinking of that with the compassion, don't harm to the others. Giving an example, right? Experience and knowledge. So dana, yeah, we sacrifice for ourselves. Okay. In order to do some act in this world, there are two people or more than two people are involved. Okay. There are two or more. So therefore, as long as whatever I do, if you are a bodhisattva state, Bodhisattva state on the way to Buddha. So, in between, when we perform some act, I can I must understand first: is it hurtful, hard? I mean, painful to the others or not? If it is painful for both party, then not to do it. If it is painful for uh, myself, but benefit for the others, what do you think? Then? Will you do that? Uh, if we are more, if we are more selfish, no, we don't do that. If you are a bodhisattva, uh, okay, I painful, never mind. I bear it for the good of yours. So it become a beautiful and good act. That is what the bodhisattva did. Even the bodhisattva, the Buddha to be, sacrificed he, his own life for the benefit of others because he can take it. But most generously. If the both party don't get hurt, okay. Very easy ex- example. Hunting is very enjoyable, but animal don't enjoy. That means the party that involved the other party never enjoy. Only one party enjoy. Then it is not a good act. If both party in okay, I will I will give some food to the some birds. They eat, they enjoy. 
giving it, I enjoy. Both party enjoy. Then it's a good act. If both party don't, but the other party enjoy, I don't enjoy, but I'm sacrificed. For me, I'm happy because the party is happy. But come to this level, it may not, it may not be that easy. If we are selfish, why should I do it for him? Right? But as you grow up, as you develop spiritual cultivation, then I will feed him first before I. Buddha has done that. Not because of Buddha did it, because your compassion is here. It will come naturally. I never mind. I don't eat one day, doesn't matter what. what just a one meal only one. That person has not eaten for two, three days. Come, I give you my food. That means I suffer here, he enjoyed. But I enjoy in my inside. I sacrifice. Done. So people come to second level. I think first level is I do something, we both parties are happy. Because to do something, there are two or more people involved. The other party happy, I'm happy, so okay, I do. Other party not happy, I happy? No, just like hunting. But other party is happy, I am not, I, I take it as a pain. But I sacrifice. That's called dana, sacrifice. Dana doesn't mean that uh, buy some, cook some uh, food and give to Bhante or whatever. No, not really. That's part of the dana. Dana means actually sacrifice. You sacrifice means you give your food means it's your sacrifice. You earn it. It doesn't come to you. You give donation means it's your, 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 your uh, set, your hard work. Your sacrifice. You sacrifice for something to earn and you offer to someone else. It's dana. Without that's like the first, the first, the basic word for dana means sacrifice. How you sacrifice? Your time, your money, your energy, your knowledge, everything you are giving. So therefore, it is your sacrifice. Buddha as a, a, a bodhisattva, Kwanipusa. He sacrificed dana, dana paramatta, three, three types of dana. Finally, what we can give, give. What he can give from the body, he give. At the end, the whole life, he give. The Buddha, Bodhisattva. And recent life, I don't know whether it is right or wrong to say that, Lord Jesus, he sacrificed. He sacrificed his life. For the benefit of others. He didn't want to bow down to the wrong thing. Say no mean no. This is not right. It's a good example. And he is one of the teachers after the Buddha said giving is better than to receive. You love your neighbor. This is compassion. The Buddha of course in the earlier he already said all those teachings. But thereafter, there are some teachers, some people, they have practiced, those who practice to the certain level, they have already planted that concept in their, within their heart. Giving is better than to receive. Of course, Buddha say, dhanam sargasa sopanam. Giving is, the giving paved the way to uh, heaven. So, the teachers, teachers us doesn't mean that if you don't practice it, if you don't get into our heart, by learning, memorizing, storing in the, our, our unit, doesn't mean. That's why you know what is compassion, you know what is dana, but when you come to it, you have to think about it. You start thinking, can I, can I? No, no, no. If someone's in trouble, automatically you come up. That is called your practice. Your cultivation is more higher than the normal. Otherwise, oh, giving is good, 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 good. I mean, man, you give to serve is very good. That is devotional, devotional part. Do everything as they are told, not understanding. But one day, even another one say giving is no good. Then they stop. Why? They hear and believe. Believing is not exercise in the teaching of the Buddha. You believe first, you see the devotional approach. Thereafter, you examine. 
you understand it, you realize it, then get into your heart. Then you practice by you 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 already practicing. You don't you don't need to think about twice. Something happened, something you saw in the road, or you automatically. I think in this country, most of the people are learned that. I have seen them. When someone is in difficulties, they go down and help. The rest, they don't make any noise. It's a beautiful. Don't need to say I'm a Buddhist. I'm so, no, not necessary. The brand is not necessary there. Not necessary. But the work is necessary. Kamana vasala hoti, kamana hoti brahmana. By action, you become pure or unpure. By action, you become good or bad. Not by your name, not by your religions, not by anything, not you, what you, you are. By what you perform, that decide what you are, good or bad. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. Uh, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. So there's another one more question. Uh, so uh, it seems that we get more annoyed uh, easily with, our, with people who are closer to us. So why is it that we feel that way? For example, why is it more difficult to be kind to people closer to us, like our family members or our friends? And is there a way that we can go about to deal with this kind of uh, annoyance? Sorry, can you repeat it? Because I did not really get it clear. Okay. So uh, we tend to be more annoyed. Uh, we get annoyed more easily with people who are closer to us, like our family. You mean like we get angry or something like that? Yeah. We tend to get... Yeah, I'm not annoyed, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. So uh, people who are closer to us, we feel that way. Uh, our friends, our family, we tend to have high expectations of them. So how can we actually deal with this anger? It means to say that we are good with or we get annoyed with the people that we are not happy or and the people that we are happy, we don't, we don't get that, is it? Yeah. To people who are closer to us, generally, we tend... Can we very, I mean, we are good with them, right? Uh, we can get Those more... Those who are very close with us, uh -huh. we usually don't get angry with them, right? I, no, the question says that we are more demanding of them. We tend to get angry with them. For example, uh, we care a lot more about their, their opinions of us. Or we care a lot more about how, they, yeah, how we feel. Well, actually, these are all part of our human nature. That I mean, uh, basically, what everyone likes is that we like to see things that what makes us happy? We usually don't like to see things, don't like to associate with things that we will not give, be happy. So that we got to understand that uh, practice the equanimity. Equanimity means that to look at everything as evil, uh, as evil. It is that we have to develop ourselves. Look into maybe okay. I tell you another story. I think it's due to the, our understanding also. Okay. Someone told me this story before when I was in Malacca. He said that uh, some, someone suddenly is, start scolding someone. Say to me, every day he scolds me. Then I start getting angry with him, take revenge from him. Because I don't, see, I don't like to see his action, accusing me, scolding me, right? Then what happened when I come to understand the reality of that? Another one of you have come and tell me, Trevoran, why are you angry? Well, I will tell you. Oh, because that person every day is called me. Every day accuse me. So it's natural, right? Then one of you have come and, oh, that person, Trevoran, that one is Orangila, madman. Then what happened to my anger? You saw already. That means realization. I realized, oh, he's a mad man. Oh, no wonder. Why should I? That it is good that I understood it earlier. Or I said, why I bother? I'm not in the wrong. If I'm not in the wrong, doesn't matter what you say. I don't get. But in the normal world, this thing doesn't happen. When someone use their word, we use two words to Take the revenge. That's a normal nature of human being. But if you have some, if someone has understanding that who is that person, or it doesn't matter, I'm not involved. 
And at the same time, you are practicing the patient, tolerance, understanding, according to the teaching of the Buddha. Then that will never harm you. In fact, it will be a blessing for you to cultivate your thing further and further. To how to accept the challenge. Because definitely you will go through more than that in the future. Then you determine yourself, you improving yourself, you should be happy. It's a blessing for you. As long as I'm not involved, why should I? And start doing metta or loving kindness or practicing the, the determination. Oh, I will, I will not get involved. There are many things. If everybody can understand this one, I think the world will be more uh, peaceful than this. All right? Thank you, Bhante. Maybe just one last question, a quick question from Facebook. So uh, the person said, thank you, Bhante. And I was thinking about what is compassion and whether I am compassionate. Oh, good. That's a very good question. What is compassion, right? Oh, I can talk here at night about that. <laughs> <laughs> the compassion means actually literally that to be, uh, uh, I mean, when something, when some, okay, I think a very good example is when someone see someone in sorrow, someone in unhappy mood, unhappy mood, someone is uh, in need of help. The compassion means to look into that particular thing uh, so that okay, help help him. But you don't. The real compassion, the, the one who practices the compassion regularly, he doesn't need to think about it. Immediately, it's already jump out, pop out from this one. That is compassion. Oh. In other words, is compassion is uh, we got the, the kind of pitiful feeling within ourselves in order to help the other party. We have a true feeling about the other party who are in trouble. Compassion, loving kindness, and may, we, may, may they be well, may they be happy, may they be successful. To have a pure mind, not just to verbal uh, practice. It should come from the heart. May they be well, may they be happy. We repeat, I think every session after the every session, and every hour after Dhamma talk or what, we repeat it. But actually we are repeating it by the mouth, not repeating by the heart. Just repeat, repeat after the chopu, repeat it. But it doesn't have any effect, no impact on the other party. If you really do, one example, sometimes devotees come here and tell me, Bhante, Sopu, my father or my brother or my mother is in this situation. I will ask them, can I have a picture? Why I ask a question, picture? Then I visualize him in my, can I say, in my heart? I visualize in my memory. Oh, I see the person, I see the person in suffering. Then my feeling arises according to what I see. Then the stronger feeling, feeling of love, feeling of compassion is arising. If I, if someone I say, Bante, can you pray, please pray for me, for my mother? I do still, but that feeling is not there. If you really do with the feeling, it will cure the other part. It will. But you must do it in the heart. You must do it in, uh, with the feeling. Not just recite, may he be well, may he be happy, may he be whatever it is. It's just a, a wording. It doesn't come from the heart. It must come from the feeling. So that's why when they come to me, I say, can I have their picture? Why is it so true? No, they, then oh, can, 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 can you bring me to the place? I will see the person. How they, Because when you see it by yourself, your feeling is different. The compassion is stronger. Your determination is stronger. The, your focusing is very strong. Then it can cure. It will help. So hope that no one will come after this one, taking the pictures, photograph. <laughs> Correct? It's again always a feeling of 
feeling our feeling no wobbling not wording but, but the feeling if you feel sad that mean you have a compassion there but not everybody feels sadness when somebody in trouble no not everybody that depending on the degree of your compassion your cultivation so therefore always cultivate cultivation is always good when the precaution is taken taken there's no fear that's what i want okay sir thank you so much bhante for the beautiful sharing uh i think this is actually a good place to end the session so uh will bhante be able to guide us to lead us for dedication of merits the sharing of merits so are we we share yeah. the merit and dedication right yes sir. so let us all together we all of us attended dhamma session sharing of the knowledge okay so therefore which means that we spend this half an hour or one hour with pure thought no evil thought during this period so that means indirectly those are the we call merits mental good mental energy so it is good to share this mental energy with devas the kwanin also bodhisattva is also devas there are many other devas and deities uh, that unknown to us that we have feeling not seen but we have feeling we have some experience of feeling of devas and unknown divine being so it's good that it is said that they depend on our merits true or not true still i do not know they were they never after transferring of merit or after sharing the merit they never telephone me or send sms me sms okay thank you so i receive it do it again never said that so therefore again i will come to something okay yes or no we do not know we cannot prove but what we do is good right if we curse someone it's bad so we are sharing the merit which means it's good but you want to confirm whether they receive or not there is no way not neither youtube or inter internet also can help us no way but our it's our belief it's a good belief right belief but it is still remain as a belief but it's a good deed so when we share it doesn't mean that we quran seek it i mean we reduce from our pocket give someone no 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 it will again increase ours because it's a good thought okay so let us for all the devas remembering those who helping us those who are sharing with us and those who are i mean protecting the buddha sasana ourselves may they rejoice this good merit whatever we accumulated here by listening and practicing for their well being and happiness and in return may they continue their blessing of all of us especially in this kind of situation today we are having a lot of uh, uh, health issues huh? maybe they are they are possible to help us to get rid of all those things hoping that wishing that and we will transfer or share the merit with all devas okay together etavata cha ammi sambhatam punya sampadam सबे देवानुदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया एतावता च अम्मी संबतं पुण्य संपदं सबे सत्तानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया एतावता च अम्मी संबतं पुण्य संपदं सबे भूतानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया साधु एन देयर आफ्टर नॉट टू फॉरगेट अबाउट आवर एंसेस्टर्स द पेरेंट्स आवर फ्रेंड्स हु हैव पास्ड अवे हु डिपार्टेड अस नोन एंड अननोन इफ दे आर दे आर वेटिंग फॉर आवर हेल्प दैट इज आल्सो मरिट सो लेट अस नाउ individually and collectively transfer merit to our departed one the especially i am very proud to say the, <laughs> the beloved 
the Prime Minister of this country, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, and the rest of the people who brought this country to this level, that we live very happily. May they all be happy and be successful in their life wherever they may be, including all our other friends. Okay. Idam me nati nang o tu sukita wong tu nato yo. Idam me nati nang o tu sukita wong tu nato yo. Idam me nati nang o tu sukita wong tu nato yo. May I announce that will conclude our. Dhamma session sharing, and I hope I wish that and at least you benefit some, some not all. For so our Dhamma session, I am, I do, I did my very best to share, and then further, if you have anything that I like to share with you as well. Thank you again for you uh, selecting myself into your Dhamma sharing session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bhante. You are most humble. I'm sure that all of us have learned a lot from this session. Um, perhaps, Bhante, you can now lead us to pay respects to the Buddha. Okay. We will. Okay. Traditionally, we will recite the uh, forgiveness of the fall from the Buddha, Kaina Vaja. Pai na vaja jitte na pama de na maya katang Achayam kam mi vangke buri pang na tatagata Okay Thank you very much again. Uh, may we invite those at home and uh, okay. to give to pay three prostrations to venerable. Uh, first prostration. May you all be well and happy. Keep continue doing this uh, marvelous job, wonderful job. And uh, be blessed with all the good health, prosperity, and happiness. We, we meet again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bhante. I mean, what I mean is not here, in Samsara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>